today we are going to talk through the five reasons your planner might not be working and how to fix them. So today we are going to talk through the five reasons your planner might not be working and how to fix them. So have you ever gotten excited about a planner? Have you ever wandered the target aisle and shopped or maybe hopefully shopped a small business online excited about the possibilities and the beauty of a new planner? Seriously, I am always one that pre-PW planners was guilty about buying so many planners, so many journals, and never using them. So if you are one of those individuals, then you are my people, right? Where you've bought the planners, but maybe haven't used them all to their full capacity. Or, you know, one of my favorite things as a kid was shopping for school supplies. And I realize as parents now that looks different than what it did when we were kids, but I loved going back to school shopping and picking out all my new supplies. So if you are one of those, I got you. So, so here's the problem. A couple months in, the planner's abandoned. Your to-do list is scribbled on, on post-it notes and envelopes and additional notebooks. And all those possibilities in your planner now feel like broken promises. So have you ever thought maybe one of these below? Um, I wish I could be better about actually using my planner. Every time I open it, something seems to get in the way and I quit. Hello, mom life. The fear of making mistakes has paralyzed me. And, or my life is so hectic that I find time, like to even find time to fill up my planner seems really hard. So guess what? We're all human. We all slip up on habits and routines and you are like everyone else. Even myself, sometimes I get out of the habit of using my planner. So the good news is, is you can overcome these issues if you just have time to develop the habit and intention. So what I thought I would do is walk through kind of the five biggest issues that I see and how to fix them. So first one is it's too complicated. Have you ever bought a planner or even designed one with me that you thought was going to be perfect for your life? Um, it had all the boxes for habits, water, exercise, time blocking, to-do lists. And then you realize that all it ends up doing is overwhelming you. Yes, I've done that too. So here's the beauty. If you do custom or um, really think about the intention behind it, we can fix this. So first of all, make sure your planner is built around your life and not some ideal version of you that really just isn't going to be realistic. Um, it's make sure it's filled with the habits of things that you really have the intent of implementing. And again, not things that just really aren't going to work for you. So for example, I love the little water droplets and planners. I have put them in my own. Do I actually ever fill them out? No. So I have stopped putting the little, little water droplets in my planner because I just never fill them out. It's the some ideal version of myself that's going to fill out all the habits and I just never do. I end up just drinking enough water without it. Um, now, it works really well for some people, just not me. On the flip side of that issue, the other issue is maybe it's not complicated enough. I know that I'm contradicting myself here. But it goes along the same lines. If you are running a business, your planner needs to meet you there. Um, do you have the same tasks every week that you're spending 20 minutes just writing down the same tasks? Why? This is why you need your planner to be pre-filled with repeatable habits and routines so that you can just go to just doing the task instead of spending a half an hour planning out all the tasks. Some of the small businesses that I've worked with, I have, and I'm thinking of one in particular, her name is Stephanie. She has in her business, a particular day, she does certain tasks. So on Monday, she does all of her social media and content management. On Tuesday, she works with clients. On Wednesday, she does like business admin tasks, right? So we actually pre-filled her planner with some of those tasks so that she's not writing it down every single week, right? She has a very defined system on how to run her business. And we pre-filled her planner to do that. Um, for example, even if you don't run a business, I've seen some planners that, you know, how time blocking, but they don't have any space or lines or times to actually time block. Um, I would find myself quitting if I had to like really visualize what the times were and everything, if it was just open space, right? So that's where an example of it's not complicated enough. 
those two reasons are why I created a custom planner service and a custom planner light, as I call it. <clears throat> so on my website, for example, I sell the Better Everyday Planner, but I have a custom planner light version that says, okay, you can take this planner and we can tweak it to your needs because everyone is different. And I firmly believe that when a planner has the items that in it that aren't working for you, it's going to cause you to quit. So again, love your current planner already, just need some tweaks, I'm your girl. Love the Better Everyday Planner, but want some tweaks, I'm your girl. Because not one person is the same, so not every planner should be the same. Now, the Better Everyday Planners, right, are there to start sustaining your habits and intentions and routines, and then you build upon them into a world where you can then create a planner around your life. Other reasons, this is one that is a big one for moms, is you do not have enough time. This one is a classic and you know, is one that I even do a lot of mentoring around in my corporate job. So failing to plan equals planning to fail. I write this down on my stories all the time. Every minute you spend planning saves 10 minutes in execution. So if you do the math, that gives you a thousand percent return on energy. So sit down and actually create your plan for the day, for the week. Again, consistency is key here. You should be able to create a rough plan for your week in an hour and spend every day, 10 minutes in the beginning of the day, confirming your better everyday five tasks, as well as your, you know, part of that is your daily big three, your top three to do's for the day. Don't know what the better everyday five tasks are. I'll drop the link in YouTube. Um, But again, it should only take 10 minutes to set your intentions for the day. And it makes a massive difference in your productivity. The other way of thinking about this is if you do not have a consistent habit of brain dumping, this is one that will really help in your productivity and time management. So again, jot down all those, what I call little tornadoes spinning in your head, both big and small, cross off those items that um, you need to eliminate or delegate. And again, maybe you don't get to delegate, but if you have a partner, hopefully you can delegate some home tasks to that person. Um, And then everything remaining on the list, you should be able to categorize by, for example, personal, home, business, career, right? Categorize it and then prioritize it. And then when you're focusing in on your day, you already know your priorities for the day. Um, The, another issue that kind of goes along with that is maybe you only have one list or one brain dump list. So have you ever made a brain dump list out and still feel overwhelmed? Well, that's because you're not doing it right. So you need to separate and separate and segregate your brain dump list into categories and get it all on paper. So in my planner, for example, and I'm going to flip to the page here, there is, I have two forms of brain dumping in every one of my planners. So hopefully, right, this is the project and to-do list. You'll see that there's an orange orange box on the side. That is for, like, you could write home. You could write your, if, for example, you're on a board, you could write church, you could write career, right? So you're brain dumping in the beginning of the month, your tasks that maybe you're carrying over from last month or that you haven't dealt with. Um, Again, there's two spreads, a two-page spread of that every month. And then the other part that I have in most of my planners every single month, even my custom planners, is boxes for brain dumping. Because sometimes people don't want like little check boxes. They just want to be able to write notes and reminders there. So again, brain dumping is super important to in- intentional productivity. Um, that is the cornerstone of how I manage my own life. Because if I don't write it down, I will forget it. So fun fact, your brain is wired to remind you of things. So if you ever had that nagging feeling when you're at the grocery store and you remember that you need to go and call the hair salon to make an appointment tomorrow. Um, If you ever notice that your brain reminds you of those things only when you can't do them, it's super annoying. So turns out your brain isn't reminding you to do them just to remind you. It's reminding you to make a plan. Again, reason for the brain dump. Um, It's actually called the, okay, I'm going to say this wrong, but the Zynarnik effect. (laughs) Um, And it, It's an effect on your brain that reminds you to make a plan if you don't have one. Um, 
which then induces stress and frustration. So if you utilize the brain dump consistently, um, you're, you may get reminded of it, but you're not going to be stressed and frustrated because you know that it's on a list, right? So not only do you need to make sure you keep a brain dump list, but you need to make sure you're categorizing it so that you're not getting overwhelmed by just one massive list and, and seeing everything without to-do lists, without categories, without kind of segmentation. Um, the other reason, I, and I don't have one in front of me right now, but the other reason that I've loved brain dumping with a lot of my custom planner clients as most of my custom planner clients are using disc planners. Disc planners, unlike bound planners, allow you to move the pages, right? So if you don't want to rewrite your list every month and because maybe you're not going to be able to get to it in a month, you can actually move the list to the next month without having to rewrite it. So I used to use disc planners a lot. Um, again, I don't have one in front of me right now, but that is something that I've always loved to do as well. And I'm going to grab my next material. Another common mistake that I see, and I have a whole bag full of them because I'm your planner girl, is somebody might say, I'm afraid of making a mistake. I can't stand when I have to cross out pen. This is a me personally thing. And then it looks messy. And then I just don't want to look at the page. If you don't relate, that's fine. But I definitely have come across that myself and with others. Cool. So if you haven't discovered them yet, this is going to be like a big stack here. There is something called Frickson, Frickson, F-R-I-X-I-O-N, erasable pens and highlighters. So these are some of the sample highlighters. And again, they come in fun colors. This is like my coral color. That is the same color as the back of the wall, uh, as well as pen, right? That come in all different colors as well. And we did not have these as kids. I love them. I wish we had them as kids. So they're, they're exactly what they sound like. They're erasable pens, erasable highlighters. I think they also have erasable markers where I can plan out my week. Um, and again, I have the planner pad here in front of me. Um, I can plan out my week. And then if I was like, oh, shoot, that time block here isn't right. Then I just, I'm going to show you in a sec. I'm erasing it. And boom, line is gone. How awesome is that? So that is, again, common issue I see of why maybe you don't work use your planner consistently. These are like $9 on Amazon. Totally worth it. Those five issues, again, going through them, it's maybe too complicated, not complicated enough. You don't think you have enough time. That's a big one. You only have one to-do list or brain dump list, so you're not managing your overwhelm well enough. And then you're afraid of making a mistake. Those five issues are really what we can see from a consistency perspective. And the other thing I'll say, this is kind of a more an ad lib issue, is you're not scheduling time to plan, right? That kind of goes back to that you do not have time, but make sure you're actually scheduling it in and you know every week when you're sitting down and creating those intentions. For me, it's on Sunday evenings. For a lot of people, it's Friday afternoons because they don't want to spend the time on Sunday intentionally planning. I just happen to do it on Sundays, but make sure you're actually spending the time. Remember, if your planner isn't working, you aren't alone. The key to finding the right balance is customizing it to fit your life. Don't make it overwhelming. Simplify and pre-fill your routines. Make time to plan. Again, boosting that efficiency and productivity. Categorizing your tasks and brain, brain dump lists to reduce stress. Consider a disk planner for flexibility. If you want to be able to move your pages, um, be patient, form the habits. It takes time. And with those little tweaks and dedications, your planners can be powerful tools for success. So happy planning.